In follow-up to my recent video looking at the updates soon coming for the Garmin Edge X40 series, in this video I'm digging into some of the newer features coming to the 1050 only, Garmin's flagship Edge cycling computer. What I'm covering here today is the most recent public beta as a preview of what will likely be in the next update for all users. Now over here, I've covered most of that changelog already in the X40 series. The 1050 gets all of those and then some. Now the three specific and then some that I'm covering here today are as follows added a new compass data field, added a new map data field, and added 10 and 30 second average power graphical data fields. Now these are three brief line items in the change log that I wanted to know a lot more about. What did they look like? What were their limitations? And just how useful was that 30 second average power graph? Uh, the quick tip is it's not very useful, but you'll see that in just a few moments. Okay, onto how to find and configure these new data fields on an Edge 1050. And there's a few ways to set your screens up, but the easiest way to change data fields on existing screens is just simple press and hold, press again, and select the data fields from there. Now to find map and compass, they are under navigation, single click, scrolling all the way down to the bottom, and compass is new, and map data field is new. So one tap on that, and there we go. Now I do have maximum detail on, so the load speed's a little bit slow, there we go. And the compass data field, which was right next to that, is already configured. If I do this and do this, that's working. Scrolling across to a screen that I've configured already, but it's kind of difficult to tell what is what. Top one is the three second average power graphical data field. Middle one is 10 second average power graphical data field. And the last one, you'd probably never have guessed it, but it's the 30 second graphical power data field. They can be found under power. I'll show you that one. Press and hold, scroll. So many things to choose from these days. Power, all the way down the bottom. And the neat thing with the 1050 series is that you do get a visual representation of the data presented. So under visual data, we have the power group, three second power, 10 second power bar, 30 second power bar, and there's the two new options right there on screen. Now the three second data field's been there all along including on the X40 series. I've done a whole video on just the three second power graph data field. There's a lot to know about just that data field. But the same applies to the 10 second and the 30 second data field. But I did have a few questions of exactly how it worked and what did it represent on screen? So clicking that, leaving it as is. Let's have a look at this specific page during a Llama lab test indoors performing a step test. I started the screen record a little bit late in the game here, so to speak, of this step test, but when I looked down on the handlebars and saw what it was displaying, everything just clicked for me with exactly what was being shown on screen. Now I will put my own labels on here because without them, it's a little confusing of what's what. So top bar there, three second average power graph, middle 10 second average power graph, and the last one there on the bottom, 30 seconds power graph. The X axis is 100 seconds. That remains the same across all three. The average power and the maximum power of the entire duration of the activity from start to stop, not lap, not the 100 seconds you're seeing on screen, the entire activity. And obviously the power number showing on screen there is the three second power, 10 second power, and 30 second power. What was interesting was the smoothing of that data on the 30 second power being less than useful. I guess. Now the step test here continues to step up. However, the trainer that I was on was maxing capacity. <laughs> it's the very first trainer actually that I uh, wasn't able to hold any more than about 450 watts in ERG. So the step test continues up, the trainer maxes out. I'll cover this trainer in a review soon, but it's as expected as per the spec. And step test finishes here. And you'll see the average and what it does as it comes down. Now, what's represented on the pedals there is me not pedaling at all. Cadence isn't recorded by this trainer, so my avatar is still spinning, but I'm not. So three second power drops off on the graph, nice and quick. 10 second, not so quick. 30 seconds, still rolling. So I'm not quite sure what use 30 second rolling average will be in the real world. So speaking of the real world, let's put it to the test. Same screen, same data fields. Let me put my own labels on. Okay, much easier to understand what we're seeing. And I'm about to do a 20 second or so effort up a short hill here, out riding on the gravel bike. Power to the pedals, three second average goes up very quickly, 10 seconds a little slower, 30 second rolling, doesn't really represent the effort that I'm doing. Okay, go, go, go. And off the pedals now, as I take the left corner. So the three second average, Again, representative of what I did. That's the effort that I felt. 10 seconds, not so useful. 30 seconds, 
it's kind of like looking at your heart rate graph with that cardio lag where your heart rate takes a few seconds to come up to speed and a few seconds to drop off. So 30 second average power, oh, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. Maybe for a longer effort, maybe a longer time trial or something like that. But I've always used three second power. I'm not going to be using 30 seconds very much for the graphical data field here. Now with nothing more than having read the changelog and loaded the firmware, it was a journey of discovery today for the map data field we have here on screen. This is not my map screen, it is the map data fields with a zoom level of 300 meters. Now that's non-interactive, you can't zoom in or zoom out with the map data field. And what I did find is that if you switch back to your map screen, which is the map screen I have here, and zoom out from there or zoom in, so 120, that map field on the other page will then zoom in and match your zoom level of your map screen, if that makes sense. That's now 120 at the same time as your other map screen. Okay, we go back, let's pull that uh, even closer into a 50 meter zoom on the map page, back to the page that has the map data field, and that's now 50 as well. So no control of the map data field, it's controlled on the other screen with your map. From here, you can actually switch it to a very small data field if you like, that works which is good to see. It's not limited to just those larger data fields. Um, I have Veronica riding up behind me there. Uh, okay, we switch that back. And, well, the compass is doing its thing now. I'll put the compass to the test in just a few moments. We can switch that to a single height, full width map data field and put the compass up the top. Okay, all looking good there. Beautiful day out to ride a bike today too. This is the Creswick Forest, or just north of the Creswick Forest actually. And around the corner here, I'm not dragging the video out for no reason. Well, maybe I am. Okay, <laughs> I'm about to put the uh, the compass to the test. Heading west, and let's do a 360. And see the responsiveness of both the compass field and the map data field. As I turn through north, through east, south, back west and working just as we'd hope. So I'm sure there's a few different ways to configure this but it gives us more flexibility with those additional data fields or map fields and compass fields. Compass for me, nah, I don't think I'll be using it. Now I did have one last question that I needed to answer with the map fields in particular. Now if I had a map field configured would it show the new road hazards on there or would they just not display? Here's the answer right here on screen flying back into town with a beautiful tailwind and yes there is a road pothole hazard up ahead that is being displayed on the map screen jumping ahead a few hundred meters to ensure the pop-up warning also works there we go yep pothole nearby that's all good and another tip with the map screen and the hazard alerts you can't be zoomed out any further than 500 or the alerts on screen, the little triangles you're seeing there in red, they disappear, they don't show. You'll still get the hazard warning, but it won't show on the map. You need to be 500 meters zoom or closer for those hazards to show up on screen. All right, I vote on, yep, yeah, potholes everywhere, look at those. There we go, and we vote on that, yes, thank you. And I believe that extends the time out of a few days, a few hours or something like that on those potholes. A whole other topic I'll dig into in another day. How popular are these hazard reports? And should we have more granularity, especially for potholes? There's a lot of those that just run over a few more there. Can we turn off potholes maybe and just leave the other alerts on? Anyway, topic for another day. It's time to wrap this one up. Okay, so there's a hands-on look at the map data field, the compass data field, the 10 second and 30 second data fields, both indoors and out. I'm not quite sure why the 10 second and 30 second data fields aren't ported back to the X40 series. They were initially on that changelog, but that's quietly been removed. Speaking of what's not been removed, things that have been added to the changelog today, added remote media controls. You can now configure your shifter buttons to control media playback. Again, a brief little description there with a lot more to know about, and I will dig into that in a whole other video, but I did stumble upon those configuration options in the previous public beta just the other day, where you can use your hidden buttons on Shimano Di2, or on the new SRAM Axis, the E1 buttons, or any other buttons like wireless blips that you can configure as AMP Plus function buttons to control your music. Now obviously there's no music playing from these units, but they do connect to your phone, which does play music. 
Added to that something I called Garmin out with when they added the SRAM 12-speed cassette presets, they've now added the 13-speed cassette preset. Very useful for those of us on Explore. There's a few other line items there. Uh, Shimano Steps has now been changed to Shimano e-bike. Fixed an issue where screen would display snow on power-up. Not very useful here, it's almost summer. Fixed hiding files in the file system that were supposed to be hidden in mass storage mode. Now this is a very interesting one. With these units, especially the 1050 natively supporting MTP and the X40 series soon being converted over to MTP, some of the files on here are hidden. We can't access them. Now what does that mean? Well, that means less hacking around with these devices, including changing the bell. Now the bell on this unit, that you can hear right here. Oh, that was a bit crunchy. So was that. Off. Crikey. Sounds like there's sand in the port. Oh, that was better. Now that's just a WAV file. I did a bit of snooping around looking to see if I could change that to say the Tour de France klaxon, but unfortunately not. MTP hides that away. Anyhow, speaking of the bell, another line item there, fix the ability to use the bell while audio prompts are playing and fix back to course calculation that requires a U-turn. So there's today's line items with the recent public beta. Most of those do relate to the X40 and the X50 series units. If you want to be a part of the public beta, I'll put links in the video description below, but do so at your own risk. Look, as mentioned, I will loop back to that added media controls. I think that is super cool. There's nothing like one press for bell and long press for playing bangers when you're out on the bike. It's a very handy addition. So I'll cover that in more detail soon. All right, with that, thanks for watching. As always, thumbs up if you found this informative. Hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, just like this, and we'll see you soon.